Welcome to the afternoon of the Small Talk Dev Room at Fostem. May I present Craig Letter and his quick shout out. Hello. Uh, so today I'm just going to uh, talk about some uh, recent activity from the Squeak project. Uh, the main thing I'll be talking about are, is the our latest release candidate um, for the Squeak release, Squeak 4.5. And then I'll also be talking about a couple of um, other packages that um, people have been uh, hacking on recently. So, uh, Squeak 4.5 is named Theodore for the son of our late friend Andreas Rob. Um, as I mentioned uh, last year uh, here, um, uh, Andreas was a major contributor to our community there from the beginning. Um, and last year at this time, he had just passed away uh, from a heart attack. Um, and uh, yeah, he left us way too soon. Um, and uh, at the time, his wife was uh, six months pregnant uh, with their son. Um, and so, yeah, we wanted to name this release uh, in honor of them. Uh, so my first shout out goes to uh, his wife, Kathleen. Uh, so I'll just go over a few of the highlights here from the release notes first. Um, I'm just going to start by uh, mentioning the things in italics here, and then if there's time, I'll go back. Um, so the first thing I'll mention is uh, Environments uh, by uh, Colin Putney. Um, it's a way of uh, having namespaces, basically, for having multiple classes with the same name uh, to exist in the same image or object memory. Um, and in your code, you can uh, reference the class's um, uh, environment, containing environment, uh, to distinguish between uh, classes with the same name. Um, in the area of collections, uh, we have a new kind of collection, a float collection, uh, which inherits the um, add and, and remove message interface of ordered collection. Um, which is a lot more convenient, um, but internally it uses a float array, uh, so it's still uh, efficient. Um, in numerics, we have a faster and better uh, implementation of random numbers. For dates and times, um, as part of the uh, COG uh, native code generating VMs, um, we have access to two new primitives, uh, which provide much better time resolution uh, to the microsecond. Uh, in text, graphics, and sound, uh, form pixel value at um, makes use of also makes use of a new primitive, so you don't have to uh, make a full uh, bitlet uh, when you just want to get a single pixel value. Uh, in the programming environment, uh, UI and um, uh, source code management system, Monticello, and our um, community collaboration um, process for Trunk, um, that some polish has gone into uh, MVC, the, the uh, older uh, UI, um, the one that Smalltalk 80 had, so you can actually debug in it again. And uh, as I'll be talking about later at 4 o'clock in my talk about Spoon on the Raspberry Pi, this is uh, handy for when you're running on slower hardware, which does still exist. Um, if you're doing things with embedded platforms like Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Um, so just to refresh your memory, this is what uh, MVC, the original model view controller MVC UI looked like with the great uh, flop out scroll bars. Um, so I just evaluated three halt here in a workspace, and so now the debugger works again. Um, I managed to miss the wi window of time where MVC didn't work, so I'm not exactly sure what was broken, but I'm assured now that it's fixed. Um, yeah, and then here's just a normal system browser working as well. Um, there's an improved um, command line interface uh, so you can uh, run one-off shell commands from Smalltalk uh, again. 
and I think that's also without the the full overhead of the the complete OS process. Uh, you know. Um, uh, in the area of configuration, um, when you're running Monticello, um, you can now stub history strings um, in anticipation of a, a smaller image uh, and a more intelligible Monticello history. Uh, Bob Arning's done uh, a new historical uh, website for how uh, the squeak releases have changed over time. That's uh, well worth checking out. Um, and there's a new facility uh, called Object History that makes it possible to uh, track the creation time of any object to a one minute resolution. Uh, so under fixins, uh, fixes and cleanups, um, a lot of cleanup has gone into the compiler recently. Um, and the um, proto objects message interface um, has been pared down uh, quite a bit, um, as it should be since it's the, the new uh, class root, so it should understand as little as possible. What happened with the package organization? Say so moving circular dependencies. That was something what Tobias showed me. That oh um, yeah, uh, Tobias did uh, some nice uh, visualization work of uh, package dependencies. Um, we can look at that real quick. Let's see. Yeah, and I think he used GraphViz to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see this, but um, yeah, it's always quite enlightening to uh, look at these sorts of uh, dependency graphs. Um, I'm always surprised uh, by by at least one thing when I look at this sort of thing. Um, this one, just at first glance, to me looks quite healthy and what I would expect. Uh, everything depends on collections. So that's one of them. Um, and then this one is very interesting. It sort of visualizes the, the package space uh, like a bunch of nations in a continent. Um, and just to give you the whole overview here is what it looks like. Um, and then if we zoom in, can get a similar idea about collections. Um, but it goes into a bit more detail with the all the, the class categories, yeah. Um, yeah. Just scanning around here looking for anything surprising. Um, again, it's, it's really improved a lot in the last couple of years. Um, yeah, so this is cool. Yeah, and then in the application upgrade area, um, just a little thing. Um, rectangles with zero, zero area, just their borders, um, just lines, um, can now intersect. Uh, okay, so we'll go to the rest. Um, so new and improved sorting utilities for arrays and ordered collections. Um, a new uh, LRU cache implementation. And please feel free to stop me if you'd like more detail about any of these. Um, I don't claim to be expert in all of these changes, but um, I'm happy to go and explore around uh, through the image with you. Um, promise now a fully chainable object um, with error handling. Um, so I assume that should make Seaside web app debugging uh, more pleasant. Um, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, some sort of collection support for the compiler. Um, 
logarithmic calculation fixed for integers. Um, and some interesting new um, protocol for making uh, dates and times. So you can have an expression like five minutes ago. Let's just see what we get. Yeah. So here's a date and time for five minutes from when I typed that. Uh, yeah, and so actually conceptually in the object model we have nanosecond resolution, but the, this is a cog VM, I think, which has microsecond resolution. So there used to be a dual hierarchy of new paragraph and multi-new paragraph and so on. Um, and the scanner was um, a bit messy. So that's been improved. Uh, Re-engineering of paint box more, and performance improvements for ADPCM codec. Let's see how I'm doing on time. About half done. Um, so there's a somewhat controversial feature um, called smart splitters, which um, automatically resizes um, the real estate given to the different panes in a browser to optimize their position. And this, uh, as I understand it, this feature sort of watches your uh, browsing behavior and tries to um, give more space to the things that you use more often over time. I just opened this uh, image, so I don't think we're going to see anything too amazing if I just open a system browser now. Um, but it sounds like an interesting feature to me, probably worth playing around with. Um, fixed color selection, um, being able to point to a place in the screen and use that as a way to choose colors. Um, I guess that was broken for a while. Uh, the length of a debug log report you get, uh, if you have, a say, a VM crash, uh, that length is now settable. Um, yeah, the Monticello um, preloader um, can now resolve moves between arbitrary packages. Um, that's probably a bit more obscure, unless you're using Monticello configurations. Um, so Monticello uh, file out output uh, is now encoded in UTF-8 instead of Latin 1. Yeah, there's a, a new system space analysis tool. That sounds interesting. Uh, yeah, so that's cool. So that's sort of like if you have a Mac and you want to say, you know, about the system, um, you can get something a bit like that. That's handy instead of having to hunt around for the magic incantation for doing these various things. Um, and this VM-related stuff looks especially interesting to me uh, since I've been doing a lot of VM hacking lately. Um, and as you select more of these things, then more of these items uh, show up in this report. So that's really handy, just knowing what VM plugins you've got loaded. Um, so the I here means internal, so... Uh, yeah, that's really handy to know. Maybe I'll just go through these. Yeah, so this tells you the latest update you've got loaded from the update stream. Um, the parameters you started with. Uh, the source code files you're streaming over. All your preferences. That's kind of handy to have them all in one place. Um, the preferences browser is quite useful, but uh, even though it has a search utility, uh, it can be a little challenging to know what all the settings are. Um, yeah, so this is just another another view you can get on all the what all the uh, settings are. Well, the major problem with settings is that if you don't know how it's called, like for these fonts, you probably would have like to have free type, and if you don't know that it's free type, then you will not find it this way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not sure what the difference in color here uh, means. Uh, Ah, uh, 
a summary of your Monticello source code uh, repositories at Sandy. And the working copies you've got in progress. So we looked at a few of these already. Uh, this is a nice one. This a lot of this information was always quite obscure. Uh, you actually had to read the VM source to know what a lot of these things were. So it's good to see them made more transparent here. Um, yeah, some information about the garbage collector is always nice. Your host platform. Uh, oh, and you, you can run the benchmarks right from here, that's cool. So, I forget what the numbers were when I first started paying attention to benchmarks, but it's probably about 1% of this performance. Um, so this is, yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, just in terms of sends per second, um, yeah, I think when I started paying attention to benchmarks, it was like 1 million sends a second. Um, and then we're running more virtual machine instructions um, per second than probably about three times as many uh, as uh, native instructions um, on the first machines where I thought uh, Smalltalk, uh, well, especially the Morphic UI, felt comfortable. I, that seemed to start feeling comfortable to me about around 200 megahertz. So similarly, you can run s uh, space analysis. So Morphic was workable at, at about uh, half the speed of uh, oh, swing. Oh, hey, now we got a crash. Now I can show you the uh, debug log. Sorry, say again. So that was about usable at the level where you need twice as much power for Java. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that was around 1998 uh, when we crossed that point. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I might have saved this under a different name. I think a lot was in there. Well, first let me uh, look at the, uh, so squeakdebug.log just got made here. So on the Mac you can look at this through the normal log um, display stuff. So something with Monticello went bad. Hmm. Unless that's an old one. Oh no, okay, something with 3D. Huh. Of course, every time, when it, the VM crashes are so rare, when they happen, they're always so startling to me that I can't really remember what I was doing, uh, UI-wise, uh, at that moment. Does anyone remember what happened right before? Yeah, I don't. But anyway, uh, one of the new features I was just talking about was you can set the length of this. Um, whereas before, it would just sort of grow and grow and grow, and it got to be a little annoying. So let's see if I can get back to where I was. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. I was looking at, yeah, the 4.5 release candidate. So I was, well, I've talked about all the most important things that caught my eye, so I'll just go back to this. Um, about the system stuff. So, oh yeah, I was trying to do a space analysis, and I'm not sure why that needed 3D to show the answers, but, or maybe it was analyzing part of the system that had to do with 3D, so. I won't look at that again. Um, oh, running all tests, no, won't actually do that. So you can run all the S units that you've got. Um, and then, 
last information about your log file and being a, and being able to look at it. And it's pretty much the same stuff we saw in the console app. Uh, oh, but the stack looks different. This actually looks more actionable to me. I could probably figure out what happened. So that's cool. Okay, well, just in the last couple of minutes, I'll ask if there are any questions. Can you say something about the uh, new VM? Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, Elliot Miranda has been hard at work um, over at Cadence Design Systems. Um, uh, they're continuing graciously to um, let him contribute his uh, COG VM work back to the community. Um, and so he, most recently he's been working on 64-bit uh, uh, object memory support. Dan Ingalls had uh, done uh, most of that work. Or Dan Ingalls and Ian Piumarta had done most of that work um, back when Dan was at Hewlett Packard um, in 2003. Um, but there were still some rough edges, especially uh, in the area of running an old 32-bit uh, object memory with a new 64-bit VM and uh, getting that all to work right on uh, different CPUs. Um, and he's also, yeah, so the main idea of COG is about native code generation. Um, and he's focusing mostly on uh, Intel. Um, he works on the Mac. Um, but I know in the last couple of Google Summers of Code, there have been students working uh, on ARM uh, CPU support as well. And then most recently, he's got uh, a project, sub project called Spur, uh, which is a new object memory design. Um, and I, he's got a, a new garbage collector, I know for sure, um, and also just various cleanups with the object uh, header format and um, uh, pinnable objects. So you can have objects that don't move around in memory when the garbage collector runs, which should be really good for um, media intensive uh, apps. Um, and what else was there in there? Um, yeah, I think that was about, immediate about it. Sorry? Immediate floats. Immediate floats? Immediate floats. Oh, immediate floats, yeah. Yeah, um, Yeah. so COG has been very solid for the last few years. Um, he and I used it a lot at uh, uh, Teleplace, uh, formerly known as Quack, uh, with Andreas, uh, doing uh, the 3D telepresence work. Uh, with a lot of streaming media. We were doing telephony and 3D. Um, yeah, so that work's been uh, going very well. Uh, so I, th oh, yeah. Regarding Spur, is there mm -hmm. um, some measurable speed up or is there any numbers to say how it, it's more efficient? Oh, uh, well, I mean, it's part of COG. It's just the refinement to the object, um, object memory model. Um, and a, and a new garbage collector. Uh, the, the whole point of the, those requirements is to support the new collector. Um, I don't know if um, increased speed is really a design goal of his for the, the collector. I think it, it was mostly just having to do with um, making pinnable objects that don't move. Yeah, yeah but when you have to people bits, you can put in close. You don't have an object for that, so So there must be some performance improvement, yeah, around that. But I, I haven't seen any numbers, yeah. yeah. Yes, so yeah. in fact, there is a 40 to 40% speed up. Oh, great. On benchmark, there is a, you spend 30 or 40% less time to run the bench. Uh-huh, nice. And this is uh, mostly because the new garbage collector is much faster. Yeah. And also because uh, in the new uh, object model, there is something specific to speed up behind caches. Yeah, and I'm. The fact that yeah. dash, the class of object is not very tough to make performance. Yeah, well, so a better hash means that for big hash collection, uh, you have better performance, so like dictionary assets. So I'll just close uh, showing um, one package that uh, another, another member of our community, Edgar, Edgar DeClean, uh, has uh, resurrected from several years ago called MathMorphs. Um, so here's something called a theta row plot. Um, and yeah, if this looks cool to you, you can go and find out more about it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Also
Well, if you want to build COG, um, you can come see me. If you're using a Mac, I have a build. Current mm -hmm. yeah. development room. So, should I start? Yeah. Okay.